I know that perfection is an illusion. It's impossible to produce something totally flawless. But why not to try to create something as good as possible? Unlock possibilities by changing your mindset. You will expand what's possible for you, for the ones around you, for the world. You're moving into a land of both blind spots and learning, of things and ideas. You just crossed over into the mindset zone. Join your guide, Anna Malikia, founder of Solo Biz Academy, the director of education for Book Yourself Solid and a PhD in psychology. The show you are about to listen is backed by popular demand from the Mindset Zone Archive Vault. To get all new episodes, make sure you subscribe via your favorite podcast app and visit mindset.zone. Yes, instead of .com, it's .zone. There you can find the episode archive, show notes, and other amazing resources, including how to four times your success so you can work smarter, not harder, and learn how to leverage your talents to make a bigger impact while enjoying the process. All at Mindset.Zone. Hi, Anna Malikian here, and today I'm going to be speaking about this topic of courage to be imperfect, and I really have to start by the opposite, by perfection, because I really, I thrive for perfection. I always did, and I still do. I like to do things as well as possible. I'm always looking for ways to improving. And I know that perfection is an illusion. It's impossible to produce something totally flawless. But why not to try to create something as good as possible? And I always try to do that. And this podcast is a great example of it. For instance, in preparation to produce this podcast, I invest the time and the money to learn from the podcast answer man, Cliff Ravenscraft. is amazing in what he knows about podcasting, how to produce a podcasting with quality. And I went and did this program and I started this podcast thanks to that podcast program that he has, that is podcasting A to Z. Then when I was creating the launch for uh, this podcast, I invested the time and the money to learn from Johnny Lee Dumas of Entrepreneurs on Fire, because he is really on fire regarding to podcasting and how to promote podcasting out there, mainly in iTunes. And this was very important for me. I want to do this well, because when I decided to create this podcast, The Mindset Zone, it was because I know that I can create experience that help you to expand the possibilities about what you do, who you are. So I know that this expanding possibilities by working our mindsets is a very, very important topic and really can have a big impact in your life. And I decide to do most of the episodes of podcast of this podcast as solo me, the mic and you. And I only bring guests for interviews when I think that that adds a significant value to the overall experience of for you, for my listeners. And from a marketing perspective, I'm very, I'm very aware that when we do a podcast interview, we are increasing the reach of our message to a wider audience. We are potentially speaking to our own peeps, people that already are following us, as well as to the people that are already following our guests. So it's really a powerful way of creating a 
bigger and expand our platform. That's when I decide to invite uh, the best-selling author, Michael Port, my friend and mentor, to come to an interview. I, uh, and it was my last week episode, so if you didn't listen yet, go and listen to the episode. That is an amazing interview. I did it because of these two levels, because this was important at two levels. To create an incredible experience for you is a really good content that will help you to think big. It's the think big mindset is the topic of the interview. And I was also very aware that it was a great opportunity for this podcast for me to increase the reach of the mindset zone to new listeners. So I really wanted the interview to be as perfect as possible, as good as possible. And I did my prep work. I had prepared the topics, the questions I want to cover with Michael well ahead of time. I thought I had planned equally well the environment here in my home office to be ready for the event because this happened during my five-year-old daughter school winter break. So I asked my dear husband to take her out of the house during the interview, but there was a miscommunication about timing and they returned home during the recording. I think it was at half time of the recording. And there I was, trying not to panic, trying to manage everything in order not to ruin my perfect interview that was so important. I really wanted everything to be as perfect as possible. And (laughs) probably if you are home-based solopreneur, this scenario is familiar. So many things happen that we feel, oh, how can we control everything? How can we do our best? And I was there trying to control everything, but not surprisingly, my little one, she interrupted the interview by saying hello in the mic. She loves mics. And again, me trying not to panic and I bringing all my professional skills into play, I utilized that situation to illustrate how we have to be able to deal with this type of situations that are not perfect, yet we have to keep putting our work out there. Still, I have to confess here that the truth is it took me a week to gather the courage to listen to the recording and decide if I was going to use it or not. I had worked so hard to produce that interview. It was really the right timing. My show, this podcast, was trending high in news and not wording list in iTunes. I was showing in the main feature list of the new and noteworthy. I rated number one in it, in, the, in the section subcategory of training within education, number one in subcategory of self-help within health. Uh, I was number two in uh, the subcategory of the management and marketing within business category. I um, and also was ranking very well in the top podcast list. That is the list of all the podcasts in the uh, management and marketing. So things were really going as I had planned. So, oh my gosh, doing a great interview. I I really, I was reaching more people finally. I knew that I had the opportunity to give them an experience with the interview that was very powerful with Michael Port. But that will, that experience... Uh, will determine if they will keep following my show or not. So I had to decide to publish or not to publish the interview that I thought, oh my gosh, it was not perfect. It's my daughter interrupted in the middle of it. What will people think? What kind of professional image I'm going to project out there? I really, I was agonizing with all these issues, being my perfectionist self. Oh, gosh. And I was thinking about possible solutions. Maybe I could edit that part out. 
but there was solid content that I will have had to cut as well. Maybe I could ask Michael to re-record the interview. However, that to delay the release of that episode and for at least a couple of weeks. And oh, I was uh, tormenting myself. Oh my, I, I could have paused the recording, explain Michael the situation and then start the recording again, control the situation here um, and then starting to record. But I didn't have done that. So I was in this agony and it, it took me a week to gather my courage and honestly also pressure f- by the deadline to make a decision. I sit down in my desk, in my office, and eat, play in the recording for listen to the first time. And the interview sounded better than I expected. And the reality is that doing a good interview with Michael Port is not difficult at all. If we have a good enough first question and we just keep out of his way, he will produce a great show full of useful and powerful content. That is it's a great interview. Is why he's invited so often for this kind of podcast interviews. And yes, when I listen to the interview, I can see that I'm more nervous than usual. I'm I can count the, num- the number of ums and as much more than usual. I know I could have, have done a better job of being in the moment in facilitating the flow of the interview. Yet the content is solid. The message of thinking big is so very important. And Michael, God bless him, he dealt so graciously with my daughter interruption that it produced a sweet and fun moment in the podcast. So the interview was really a good one. And it was published last week. You can go and check it out. And so far, it's the more popular episode So why did I make just a drama about it? Why? And this turmoil of this process really made me face my own gremlins about perfection. How I can put myself on the way. And I really decided, okay, I have to do something about that. So, (laughs) like, um, that was the great excuse to go grab another book to read. So I decided to go and read the book, The Gifts of Imperfection. The Gifts of Imperfection. It's a great book. I really recommend it for... um, It was the New York Times bestseller for for a... because it's a great, great book. And I knew about the book. It's written by the best-selling author, Bernie Brown, who is also a researcher, an amazing speaker that I admire a lot. I know I had read other books of her, from her. I knew about this book, so this was the great excuse. Okay, I have to deal with perfection. She speaks about the gifts of imperfection. Let me grab the book and read it. And it's a really a powerful book where... She gives us 10 guideposts in order to live what she calls the old-hearted life, a more full life. And the guidepost number two is about cultivating self-compassion by letting go of perfectionism. Fits me as a glove. But like everything, it's easier said than done. And... I yet to recognize that I strive for perfection, but often not for the right reasons. As Michael says in the last episode interview, we should be aware if we are doing something for approval or for results. And so often my perfection is for the approval to be or to fear of avoiding criticism, what other people are going to think, what is the image that I'm going to project. And reading Brene Brown's book helped me to understand and to become aware that perfectionism 
is not the same as striving to be our best. Perfectionism is different than self-improvement. And I was really putting everything together. I was saying perfectionism as the my drive of striving to be my best and perfectionism as my need of being in this constant self-improvement. Because I'm all about both striving to be our best and self-improvement, but that doesn't mean that we have to be perfect. So, because if, uh, if we decide to be in the spotlight, like we are here in the podcasting, in order to reach more people, we really have to also learn to let go of perfectionism. Because otherwise we are stopping ourselves. We are not being ourselves. We are not being our best. We have to have the courage to be imperfect, uh, to be vulnerable, to dare greatly, like Bernie Brown is always reminding us. And that after uh, doing or starting this process, because this is a process, I still, as I say, I still have, I'm, I'm totally a work in process in this field of perfection and imperfection and let go of perfection and have the courage of embracing imperfection. So I need inspiration. And one of the places that I get that inspiration for this topic is really the work of Brene Brown that I really recommend if you are not aware of her to go and check. I One poem, one poem now is an excerpt of a speech from Theodore Roosevelt that she uses a lot in her work, in her talks, in her speeches, is also in her book, Daring Greatly, that is another of her books. She has this beautiful quote from this speech of the citizenship in a republic um, that was uh, delivered in the 1910s by Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, and I want to play it for, I have, if you go to the show notes, so you always can go to the show notes where I keep uh, uh, the links for the book, for instance, The Gift of Imperfection, there is the link there for the book. This uh, quote is also there, the full quote is also there. And I'm also putting a video that I'm going to play here, just a couple of minutes of the video, but you have the full video of Brene Brown speaking why your critics aren't the ones who count. So you just have to go to mindset.zone. So instead of .com, you write .zone, mindset.zone, four slash, and the number of this episode, that is episode 16. So mindset.zone, four slash 16, and you will have uh, all in this video too that I'm just going to play a little excerpt here. So let's see if this go as planned. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done it better. The credit belongs to the person who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with blood and sweat and dust, who at the best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, he fails daring greatly. So the moment that I read that, I closed my laptop, and this is what shifted in me. Three huge things. First, I spent the last 12 years studying vulnerability, and that quote was everything I know about vulnerability. It is not about winning, it's not about losing, it's about showing up and being seen. The second thing, this is who I want to be. I want to create. I want to make things that didn't exist before I touched them. I want to show up and be seen in my work and in my life. And if you're going to show up and be seen, there is only one guarantee, and that is you will get your ass kicked. That is the guarantee. That's the only certainty you have. If you're going to go in the arena and spend any time in there whatsoever, especially if you've committed to creating in your life, you will get your ass kicked. So you have to decide at that moment, I think for all of us, if courage is a value that we hold, this is a consequence. You can't avoid it. 
The third thing, which really set me free, and I think Steve, my husband, would argue has made me somewhat dangerous, is kind of a new philosophy about criticism, which is this. If you're not in the arena also getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. (laughs) And I really invite you to go to mindsets zone uh, mindset dot zone for slash 16 and see this is a 22 minute uh, speech or talk um because it's a beautiful and and very powerful and this is just a little bit of it that i'm playing here for you and because as this this poem uh, or this quote, it's for me, it's, um, it's poetic, so I call it so often a poem, but it's how, how daring to be great, daring greatly out there to uh, the man in the ring, uh, as this quote is often referred to, and what we can learn from it. And for me, w- when I was listening to her speaking about and the lessons that she learned Brene Brown from it, and the last one that uh, the only critic that counts is the one that is also in the arena, is also there. That that makes yes, and I I agree with that. But that makes me think that sometimes I am my worst critic. And I'm in the arena. I try to be there. I try to be out there. But why I am my worst critic? I think sometimes is if I criticize me, then I will develop like some deep skin and I will be more ready if somebody else does any criticism. I will be more ready to it. That at least is my theory about. But why I'm so tough with myself? And that is, and this is just an illustration of, of my own my story about my struggle with perfection, imperfection, uh, courage to be imperfect, uh, how to I learning to deal with my own inner critic. So I really hope that this resonate that you resonate with this struggle because. Sometimes I find that this topic of perfection and imperfection is affects too many people. So do you fight with perfectionism too? Are you your worst critic? I would love to hear from your experiences. Because it's so, so easy to let perfectionism stop us from making a difference and to play small instead of playing big that this is a topic that we cannot ignore. Like always, I would love to hear your comments. And if you listen to this podcast via my website, you can use the comments below the show notes uh, to write there. You always can contact me via email. And the the best way is you always can go to my website that is anamalikian.com or just type mindset dot zone that will redirect you to my main website and you will find there the more up-to-date information on how to reach me really i'm i i I treasure the emails that i get of uh, people like you that are just a small note or a big email how this experience that i'm creating here are impacting you and are helping you to making a difference. So um, so I really treasure that. And as always, I'm grateful that you are here. And I wish you a wonderful life. And please keep making a difference. Thank you for listening. And remember to visit Mindset dot zone. Yes, instead of dot com is dot zone. There you can find all the episodes and other amazing resources. As always, I'm so grateful that you have crossed over into the mindset zone. Spend what's possible for you for the ones around you, for the world.